So I'm very obviously not full Hawaiian. <laughs> uh, I'm a Hapa kid. I'm Hawaiian, Portuguese, Japanese, and Irish. Now, we did this test, and, like, there's a bunch of other, like, West African, little bit of Tahitian, apparently. Like, a bunch of little super-duper minor, like, barely considerable stuff, you know? Yeah, I, I got 2% yeah. Irish, bro. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. Like, Me, yeah. West African, right? So, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, for the most part, you know, the majority, I'm I'm a mixed kid. Um, but my dad's side, my, my tutu, is full Hawaiian, Nihau boy. Uh, and she had a big influence on our life when we were younger. We had to spend a lot of time with her. Uh, and then thankfully, as an adult, um, post-military, before she had passed on, we got to spend some really quality time with her. She lived with us for the last few years of her life before she passed on in her 90s. Um, she was one of the people, Papa Kalea, born and raised, homestead land up there, lived there her whole life, all of her 93 years, I believe. Um, and what she always taught us was that being Kanaka or being from Hawaii was about what you do for others, not a title, not a blood quantum. It's what are you doing for those around you? And she was a great example of that in the sense that she she fostered a bunch of kids. She, uh, she hanaied a bunch of kids that weren't hers on top of having 13 children of her own. Uh, and then also on top of losing a husband quite young, um, I believe she was in her mid or early 30s when her husband passed on. And my tutu pops, who I never met. Um, and yeah, I mean, she just soldiered on. Uh, and one of those things that she taught us was that for us, like our culture was, it was a part of our identity to lash ourselves to in the sense of like, we should have pride in being Hawaiian, not because F. Haoli's, not because of the victimhood side of it, of what was taken from us. We were schooled on all that. But what we were taught was kind of from the opposite perspective of like, do you know why Hawaiians were the first people to have electricity? Do you know why Kalakaua was such a revered speaker? Like all like kind of like pushed in the way of like, do you know how resilient and smart and just Hawaiians were very, very akamai, for lack of a better term. You know, like they're just, they're crazy social individuals. Um, I mean, just everything, you know, but we that's kind of like how it was pushed to me. And it was also pushed to me from my tutu that I was allowed to lash myself to that because my blood quantum didn't matter. It mattered on what I was putting back out into the world as a Hawaiian kid, even though I'm not full, even close to full Hawaiian, you know, not even, a, I'm barely a quarter, you know, and even with that, it was always taught to me that it's not about the blood quantum, it's about how are you taking care of the people around you, are you serving those, the, those in effect, and so for me, when I left, and I left from 17, and I know I tell people this all the time, Cali did just as much of a job raising me as Hawaii did, because I got to Cali in San Diego when I was 17, and I lived for the you know last two decades, I've lived all over from San Diego to L.A. to the Bay. Um, and I've got family, people I consider family in all those places. And really what, what it was while I was there is it, it made me stronger because it gave me an opportunity to showcase, one, what we're made of as people, and two, who I come from. So I always got to, whether it was when I was in the music industry or in the military, I've always been able to point back to people in my life and say, these are the people I come from. This is who taught me. This is who schooled me. This is who raised me. And then on top of being able to point back to those people, being given opportunities to walk out those character traits. Now that's the hard part, right? Is a lot of us get raised a certain way, but as men, women, when you grow up, when you become an adult, you have this opportunity to showcase those character traits and we all have that opportunity. Are you going to show those character traits to the people that raised you? Or are you going to play dumb? Or are you going to play lazy? You know? And so for me, it was like, I always missed home, but I also always felt like home was steady. And I mean, I got home tatted on my back, you know, but <laughs> it, it, I always literally felt like it was on my back because I always felt like 
it was such a part of what made me me. And it was like, I was always earning a new opportunity to showcase what Hawaii was to me. And, and everybody that I feel like I've had the opportunity to do that with has fallen in love with Hawaii and, and really like it, it holds a different place. You know what I mean? And, and these, some of these people have only ever been here once, but the impact is so powerful and it's not just the place, it's the people, you know, it's the people that they meet. You know? just, uh, for a quick example, before I jump it back off yeah. to you is this, this good brother of mine, shout out Tyler, um, a good brother I met on during like my music journey and he's an audio cat and he does film and stuff too. But he came out here with his fam. We had lunch at Roy's. Okay. We got to meet Ty. And now him and Ty be having full blown conversations, you know? <laughs> so it's like, you know, people, for me, it, it was always what it really was for me being away from home and why it was important to kind of sew that all up mm. was it was important because it taught me about my kuleana as far as representing this place on the mainland, you know? And it also taught me about how much this place means to me and my wife with raising our kids. You know, that's, that's, that's essentially why we came back home mm. was, you know, we had no plans to really move back home until we had Selah, which is our first, you know? And then that was when the thoughts kind of came and then my brother was deciding to move back home with all his kids. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, like the, the what, what was important about it for me was I feel like, had and this is just my personal experience. I'm not saying that everybody that that stays in Hawaii has this because I don't see that. But for me, I needed that opportunity to go away because it helped me understand why I love this place mm -hmm. and it also helped me understand the things that were important for me to represent about this place. That that action step is what really hit. Like do you walk or walk. I mean, that's that's behind my whole Kenji walk thing. It's mm -hmm. like, let me just focus on the action step by step. We get into the mountaintop, right. but it happens <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. step by step. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, and I've been there like par par paralysis by analysis, just mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do this route, this route, this route. It's like, nah, take a step, take a step. That, that reminder to actually be Hawaiian, as you're saying, act Hawaiian in, in, the, in that definition that you two gave you, mm -hmm. right? Embody these characteristics but also like perform them. Right. And so I think, you know, there's like a, un... that's the weird thing about leaving. Like we all have friends who didn't leave. Right. Right. Yeah. And so in a way, if you just classify your graduating class by who left and who did it. Mm. Right. I don't know. I mean, I think maybe majority didn't. I, we had a lot of recruiters. I don't know about, I mean, we had a lot of recruiters. That was, that was my out. Um, uh, right. Yeah. Most of the people I know, I mean, date, date the hell out of myself right now. My, <laughs> my sophomore year was 2001. Oh, 9-11. So that was 9-11. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know. That make, but yeah. like you were saying, I mean, I don't know. Like I have, I have both examples, right? I know people that left and it was all bad for them. And I know people that stayed and it was all bad for them. And then I know the flip side. Opposite, yeah. I know people that left and it brought great value to their life. And I know people that stayed here and they have done amazing things for this Ina, for the people here, for their families. So again, I think it really goes back to like what you were talking about from what you were saying, the inception of the Kenji walk thing is walking out. Like you're saying, we're going to get to the mountaintop, right? Sometimes that journey is in, in my experience is walking all the way up till you're within a breadth of the summit and getting knocked back down to the bottom and being like, okay, are you going to pick up the pack straps and do it again? Cause it's right here. Yeah. You still know where the mountaintop is, you know, the path to get there, but you've been knocked down and you have to pick up the pack straps again. And that's where a lot of people will tuck it in and they'll say, okay, cannot, I cannot again, you know? And I think it's normal, like to be a hundred percent honest, when I was going through this most recent change, there was a hundred percent those situations, you know, there was people that were dear to me that there was separation and, and unwanted things that had happened and it caused great pain. And it, and it 100% put me in the headspace for a little while of like, bro, can I do this again? You know, like. Because you start to think back and then you think back of what I call like, you know, for lack of a better term, the lives, right? Because if you really think about your life, it's like 
you think about the 17 to 21 time period, mm. how you were living, who was around you, what you were doing. Mm. And then you think about that 22 to 28 period, how you were living, who was around, what were you doing? They, they start to look very different and they start to almost not even congeal. You're like, wow, these are like different, different people. Right. <laughs> yeah. But they're pretty looks. In they're a good way, yeah, right? Yeah. In a good way. And when you get to that, to that point, it's like have all those experiences and those letdowns and those climbs up the hill and those circles around the mountain. Um, is it all worth it? And are we are we continuing to push forward or are we dead in the water? Are we packing it in and we're just gonna mail it in the rest of our life? You know, we're just gonna mail in the answers the rest of our life. 